This has been so much fun. We got here yesterday morning and we went to... Where did we go yesterday? <laughs> okay, um, we went to the zoo this morning. Crap, uh -huh. where did we go yesterday morning? <laughs> Alyssa, <laughs> where did we go yesterday? one and all and welcome back to Tom's Hit Parade. Uh, this is yeah, We decided this was a good way to divide our haul videos. We were going to do it all in one video but uh, yeah Eugene Hall in the previous video and the Portland Hall in today's video. Yes uh, we just got done with basically part the second half of uh, their vacation here in Oregon Noah and his wife Alyssa. Uh, we spent two fun-filled fun-packed days in Portland uh, yesterday when we arrived we went to the Oregon Museum of Science and Industry uh, fantastic very very interesting lots of stuff they had a featured exhibit on orcas killer whales which was I learned a lot of stuff and uh, I don't know if, I don't think Alyssa learned a lot of stuff good because she's uh, she's aiming to be a marine biologist and she's uh, in vet, sc vet school right now so she probably knows everything that uh, they were talking about but uh, yeah lots of fun and I assume you learned a lot. Yeah, it was very interesting. What and, she hasn't already told you. Right. <laughs> well, and that, it, it's what I had told Tom when we went, um, because if it was just facts about orcas, then I would she could tell me all of it or has before. Um, but they focus a lot on, like, um, indigenous tribes and how they have uh, respected or how orcas have been a part of their, like, histories. Uh, and it was really interesting. It was a really uh, excellent exhibit. Very interesting. I, I really enjoyed that. Yeah, and uh, after lunch, after and after the Science Museum, we went to Powell's City of Books and Everyday Music. There's two stores downtown, which are basically must-stops if you're even sort of interested in books or music. Those two are two places you have to go. Uh, both conveniently located about three blocks away from each other on Burnside in downtown Portland. And uh, today we went to uh, start off our day at the Oregon Zoo in Washington Park, right in the middle of Portland. It was fantastic. I've lived in Oregon for uh, 27 years and I've never been to the zoo or the science museum, so I'm finally earning, earning those credentials here after uh, almost three decades. Uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Saw dozens and dozens of different types of animals. Uh, most of them were sleeping, though, Although, but we did get to see them sleeping. You know, they, they weren't hiding in their caves or anything, so lots and lots of fun there. And uh, after that, after, and after lunch, we went to, uh, we took a walk at the uh, Waterfront Park in downtown, uh, right again along the Willamette River. Lots of fun. It kind of it reminds me a little bit of the uh, the Riverside. Is that what it's called in mm -hmm. Tulsa? Yeah, yeah. Uh, though the, we actually didn't stop there when I was visiting there. So, uh, but yeah, uh, Portland is a beautiful city, most of it anyway. Uh, and so yeah, that's a lot of fun. And after that, we went to uh, Music Millennium, which is out in the east side of. Portland, and I don't think I'm leaving anything out. Oh, mm -hmm. both in Besides. Eugene and in Portland, we had to go to Salt and Straw, the ice cream uh, chain. Uh, very, very good stuff. The first one was because of the reputation. The second time was because it was just that good that we had to go a second time. <laughs> yeah. So yes, very good. They can. They have very strange flavors on their menu, but they have a lot of really fun, unique uh, twists on basic flavors uh, that are really, 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 really good. So. Uh, yeah, I think that didn't that didn't leave anything out. Nope. Uh, so, but except, of course, the, our hulls. We of course that's what this video is all about. We have to tell you what we found. Yes. At the stores in Portland. Uh, first off, we'll be doing uh, everyday music. Uh, do you want to go first? Uh, yeah, sure. And I was actually thinking that I would do half. Let you do your everyday music, and then I could finish it up since I have so little from um, my second stop. Okay. Sure. <laughs> um, so uh, I'll start off with just a handful. Um, so whenever we got there, uh, instantly was gravitated towards their fifty cent CD section. Um, talk about a deal. Uh, and some of those deals were. Uh, CDs that I had never heard of, but I looked at and I go, I gotta try this. This just looks like something I would like. Um, so that some of an these, interesting cover on that one. yeah, it's like some of these I, I have no idea they could be really bad, but I wanted to try it at <laughs> least. Um, so my first one was uh, King Hannah with "I'm Not Sorry." I was just being me. Um, looked looked like some kind of indie pop. Uh, music and it sound seemed like something that would be up my alley and again for 50 cents 
Um, I had to pick up at least a couple of those those gamble ones. Um, the next one was uh, the record company Play It Loud. Now I've heard of the record company. Um, I don't know why. I don't think I know any of their music, but they. Seem... I think I used to have that CD. I, oh really? I thought it was okay. If right, I got rid of it. Yeah. So, well, for fifty cents. Um, and, and, and you know, there's often he likes stuff that I wasn't totally crazy about. So. Sure. And it looked it looked a little bit. I, I don't know for sure, but it looked a little synth pop, just based off of the the cover and the neon lights. So um, again, that was one of the 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 chances I took. Um, and then I got one that is uh, Common Holly. The album when I when I say to you black lightning okay sure when I say to you black lightning <laughs> um, also kind of seemed like maybe some indie pop uh, music that I wanted to try out uh, that was my main ones and then this one I swear I've heard of this I haven't I couldn't place it mentally what it is but I swear like this album looked very familiar and set like the band's name seemed very very familiar so. I could be totally making that up, but at least uh, I thought I might have known it. Um, I'm going to guess Sundara Karma um, with the album Youth is Only Ever Fun in Retrospect. Um, that was some of my... Those are some of the pickups that I had that were just just some fun ones that I thought uh, I'd give a shot with. And then I'll just do a couple more before I let Tom uh, go through a few of his... his um, Again, still doing the 50 Cent CDs. I got uh, Everything to Everyone by Bare Naked Ladies. Um, I've been picking up a few of their albums. Haven't got a full discography, but at least have a decent set. Um, so this was one I did not have. Uh, and then I also picked up... Uh, let's see that one, yeah. Uh, Third Eye Blind. Uh, Self-titled, I think. Uh, yeah. This... Uh, I mean, I probably know three songs by them, Semi-Charm Li Semi Life and Jumper, two of the songs, but for 50 cents, I thought, eh, I guess I'll give them a an actual shot and listen to a few more of their songs. Um, so uh, that, that'll that wrap up my first part, and I'll let you do yours, and then I can come cool. back in. Thank you. So, yeah, I got uh, actually only about only two of the CDs I got from uh, Everyday Music were in the 50 cent bin, uh, kind of uh, filling another, well, not really. I'm not really working on filling gaps in my Johnny Mathis discography because I don't have very much. But the more recent, the latest block of his discography. Uh, so I just decided to pick up uh, Mathis on Broadway, 50 Cent album, and uh, of course songs from Broadway musicals and stuff. So, and I'd have to check his discogra discography, but I think I have like the five or six most recent studio albums by him now. So, and this one I picked up their debut album. Uh, last week from uh, House of Records, and so their sophomore album, uh, The Bliss Album, uh, by PM Dawn. Uh, I, I had checked them out a while ago. This was before I got had really any interest in hip-hop, and I know their sound is hip-hop influenced, so I thought I would give them a try again since my, sound, my tastes have been expanding slightly over the last, uh, gradually, that is, over the last several years. So, uh, yeah, and for 50 cents, you can't really go wrong. But uh, the rest of the CDs I got were, they were all five bucks each. Uh, we got Gordon Lightfoot, the late Gordon Lightfoot with Gord's Gold. Uh, yeah, 21 of his best hits. So yeah, I uh, sad to say, I, I all I have of Gor uh, Gordon Lightfoot is a few albums on LP. So I thought I would get a better look at his discography. And the one disc I was missing in my Tracy Chapman collection, Telling Stories. Uh, yes, I used to have some of Tracy Chapman's stuff. Uh, then in a purge, I pared down to just her, deb her debut album. But now recently, House of Records had like her last three or four albums. And I'm kind of compulsive that way. If I can get a big chunk of an artist's discography, I tend to just say, what the hell, I'll get the rest of it. So, but this time I'm going to try and make her stick with me. So, And then uh, Angelique Kijo, the, very, the best of. Uh, I do have this already, but uh, the disc is kind of scratched up, so I uh, decided to uh, pick up this one. It's a much, much better condition disc, and for only five bucks. Yeah, only five bucks. That's that's only to some people. I, I, I realize, you know, the amount you're willing to spend is relative, a bit from person to person. One goal I did not expect to uh, achieve on this trip is to fill it, to get some Sloan albums. I've got their first three. Uh, this is, I believe, their debut, Twice Removed. Or no, this is their sophomore album, hence the title, Twice Removed. As well as their debut album, Smeared. And you'll see one more 
spoiler alert coming up. And then this one, uh, the dance album of Carl Perkins. Uh, yes, Carl Perkins, one of the pioneers of rock and roll from uh, Sun Records, one of the original Sun Records artists. House of Records has the uh, the a Rhino compilation on CD, the the Rhino singles of Carl Perkins, something like that. And I I've almost picked that up a few times, uh, but then I saw this one there at uh, Epic or uh, Everyday Music, and probably sixty to seventy percent of the track listing of this is the same. And I'm always interested in picking up an actual original album of an artist uh, if it has most of their the stuff they're known for rather than just a collection a compilation so so yeah a good little chunk of stuff here that i picked up at everyday music and do you yeah want, do you want me to go with my uh or i'll do this to... you go i go okay uh, <laughs> I'm, um, I'm not confused, honestly. I, I, yeah, I got it. I had it in my brain. Should have talked about it before. Um, <laughs> all right, so uh, so finishing up my everyday music pickups because I did get quite a ha uh, quite a few, mainly those fifty cent CDs. Um, one artist that I have heard a singular a album from, uh, but did really enjoy it. Thought I might be worth trying to go a little deeper into his discography, especially since they had some of the albums. Was uh, Rufus Wainwright. Um, so here is a self-titled album, as well as uh, Want One. Uh, picked up both of those. Uh, yeah, I thought it'd be worth a shot to go a little bit deeper into his discography, because I liked what I heard. Not a huge fan, but uh, big enough that 50 Cents was worth um, diving a little deeper. Ooh, I'll, be, I'll be anxious to hear what you think of those. Yeah, I thought you would. Um, then I picked up, uh, this is uh, Wild Woman by Lucius. Um, Lucius, uh, I've listened to, listened to some of their music, but the main reason I knew of them is because, uh, they are the backing vocalists for Roger Waters of Pink Floyd's solo act. Um, that's the primary reason I've always known of them. Uh, they're talented, very talented, uh, and I like some of their solo stuff, never been a huge fan, um, but I had never listened to this album. I think that this may be their first solo album, and I wanted to listen to it, um, uh, so I was excited to find that one. Uh, not an artist I would have thought to look for, so it was a cool find. Um, and then, kind of wrapping up with those 50 Cent CDs, we have um, uh, Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, and Howe. Um, this oh. is a handful of, uh, you know, offshoot of Yes with a few of the musicians from Yes. Um, I am a huge fan of Yes and all of the different variations of the bands. Uh, so I can't imagine that this one will... I haven't heard this one, but I can't imagine that it's going to be uh, disappointing in any way. Yeah, for a, 50 that's cents. That's a good 50 cent find. Yeah, I was pretty excited. It was right in the front, too. Um, <laughs> and then last two were uh, Remember by Rusted Root, because despite being the one that introduced you to Rusted Root, I only have one of their albums um, <laughs> and was wanting to check out another one this included. So... Uh, for 50 cents, of course. And then uh, I actually got to finish one of uh, an artist's discography that I'd been looking for. Um, I have picked up all of the albums from the Chicks uh, slowly throughout time. Uh, and they're very accessible. I just have never found this one cheap enough that I want to pick it up. But the last one I was missing was Fly. So I was able to add that one to my collection as well. And then the only CD that I actually spent the full price tag amount on um, was uh, The Feelings, Boy Who Cried Wolf, or Boy... Boy Cried Wolf, Boy sorry, Christ. added a word. Um, yeah, I, I, we talked about the feeling, uh, or I guess we will talk about the feeling, because you, you probably haven't posted that video at this time. Um, oh, right. Yeah. So <laughs> we will have talked about the feeling, uh, but the feeling is a band that I really enjoy, and this was one of the few albums of theirs that I do not have. I was really excited to see this one and pick it up. Cool. Yeah. Well, you technically you didn't spend full price on it. It was only well, was it, $5. Okay, sure. <laughs> not 50 cents. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then my my modest little haul from uh, Music Millennium. Uh, the only CD I bought new was um, an interesting one. It's actually a holiday album, but I kind of been wanting this for quite a while. It's from 2021, I believe. Uh, the Piano Man at Christmas by Jamie Cullum. It's uh, Jamie Cullum's first holiday album, and as you guys know, I love his voice. Uh, I got every one of his studio albums. Uh, now And now, with this one, I do have every one of his studio albums. But yes, this is actually a two-disc set. Uh, it was originally released in a one-CD uh, format. So, uh, yeah, I'm very much looking forward to... Uh, this will probably stay sealed, or at least stay unplayed until after Thanksgiving. That's when I traditionally break out the holiday tunes. And then this one, uh, Patsy Cline's Gold. It's a two-disc set of 
the classic country uh, singer. I do have a two disc, the two disc version of the Icon installment of hers. Uh, this has more songs on it, and uh, you know me and collecting uh, series and that kind of thing. I've got several gold titles already, so I decided to upgrade to this one. This adds probably six or eight more songs that, than the Icon uh, collection has, so I was happy to pick that one up. And then this next one, uh, Ash, Free All Angels, and uh, yes, I already have this one, uh, so it's a surprise for Noah. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. It's one of my favorite albums. I think you really, really will enjoy it. It's, okay. uh, I hesitate to call it Britpop, because, partly just because I don't enjoy much Britpop, but this one uh, just clicked with me instantly. It's, they've just got a great sound. Awesome. And uh, Although I have tried some of their other albums, and they didn't click with me nearly as much as this one did. So, uh, yes, I will be interested to hear what you think. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. And I got a couple of soundtracks as well. Uh, at, I believe it was a thrift store, I picked up uh, Nashville's Season 1, Volume 1 soundtrack, so they had Season 1, Volume 2 there. I have started watching the show on, it's not on Netflix because we don't have Netflix, I can't remember what uh, streaming service it's on, but I've started watching it. Uh, interesting, a little bit soapy for TV shows that I like, but what the heck. And then uh, Everwood, uh, not not all of you are, might remember this, uh, it was a a family drama show that was on back in the early 2000s, I believe. Uh, Treat Williams was uh, the main star of it. And so, yeah, it was a very, very good uh, show. And uh, you know, I decided to pick up the soundtrack. So I'm not sure what else to say about it. Uh, but it does have Jason Mraz. It has uh, Guster, a, an indie rock band that I've enjoyed for a while. And actually, as a bonus track, Treat Williams actually sings a song. So I... I'm a little hesitant because, you know, uh, sing singing actors don't have the best track record. But uh, anyway, I was happy to pick that up. Uh, for a long time, I didn't realize that uh, there actually had been a soundtrack album for Everwood. So anyway, and uh, this next set of three are Stevie Ray Vaughan. And uh, yeah, I decided to pick up his sophomore album, Couldn't Stand the Weather. And these are remastered editions with bonus tracks. And I'm not sure which is their, his, his third and which is his fourth, but I didn't have these before. Uh, in step, and sorry about the glare on there, and sorry about the if it, the uh, brightness and darkness shift. Sorry about that. I mean, we're in a hotel room, so it's not the best setup. Uh, and soul to soul, so I now have Stevie Ray Ravon's first four albums. Uh, my sister's uh, collection had a best of CD, so that's how I kind of got uh, clued into Stevie Ravon, and also watching a. Uh, History of Rock and Roll documentary series uh, kind of got me uh, interested in checking them out. So so there's that. And uh, then I've got, uh, as, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, i was been collecting or uh, been picking up the Sloan uh, albums. Uh, here's another one, One Chord to Another. This, this is their third album, I believe. So now I have six of their albums. So their most recent one, Steady, is very, very good. That was in my albums of the year last year, I think. And then perhaps the most unlikely uh, pickup of mine uh, in this trip, Run DMC's Greatest Hits. And actually, this is another one that um, the bug got in my ear from that History of Rock and Roll series, and the, the final chapter of it goes talks about uh, hip-hop and stuff. And They were uh, hip-hop pioneers, and uh, some a couple of their songs are kind of cool, even for us who don't particularly, love, particularly like hip-hop. And then here's one that I had a long, long time ago and have kind of been wanting to pick up again. Testify by Phil Collins. This is his 2002 album, I believe. Yes, a couple of great songs on here. Don't Get Me Started is probably my favorite on here. It was not a single, I believe. But uh, yeah, a good album, uh, perhaps underrated in terms of his, his discography at large. So, uh, so yeah, that takes care of my uh, Music Millennium Hall. Yeah, the uh, reason we did that video so weird in the order was because I only picked up one thing from Music Millennium. Um, I, probably because it was the last stop we had, I already spent more than I uh, should. So I had to, to scale back a little bit, still wanted to pick up something though, and I saw this, which I hadn't really seen anywhere else. Um, it's not that uncommon, I just had never stumbled across it. Um, but it, it's Hard Fies, uh, Stars of CCTV. I picked up their second album, a little while back, I can't even recall where it came from um, or why I picked it up because I had never heard of the band. But regardless, I uh, checked out their second album and really enjoyed it. It was one of those just 
happened upon it and ended up really loving the album. And so I wanted to check out their first album. Uh, I think that this is their more popular, more successful album. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely very excited to give them more of a listen um, because I really enjoyed that second album. So yes, that's all I picked up for Music Millennium. Great store, very impressive store. Uh, just had already spent a little bit, wanted to, wanted to scale back the spending a little bit on that one. So um, yeah, that's all we got. Yeah. Oh, and he might have bought more if the uh, $2 CD section had actually been on the sales floor. They had they had just finished up, and yeah, great timing here. They had their semi-annual sidewalk sale, which finished up the day before we arrived in Portland. And so they, they had had a huge selection, apparently, of $2 CDs, but they're still boxed up from the sidewalk sale, and they haven't uh, rearranged to get them on the floor yet. So that's probably a big reason why he only came out of there with one CD. But uh, I'm glad you enjoyed mm -hmm. the stores, uh, yeah. record stores and otherwise, and they have hopefully have a good first impression of Portland. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, had a great time and a great time visiting you. It's uh, been, been a quick four days, five days, but uh, it's been a lot of fun. Excellent. Glad to hear it. And I'm sure Alyssa had fun, too. Uh, so, yeah, but yeah, that just means, you know, I, and of course, I am delighted beyond words to have even a short visit rather than no visit at all, and uh, you know, that's kind of the choice we had to make, but that leaves a lot of stuff to, uh, uh, to leave for the agenda for their next visit, which will happen. Yes. Uh, so, okay. uh, anyway, and yeah, you probably will, I brought a few books at uh, Powell's also, but I will probably save that for a little vacay vlog video. I took a ton of footage at the zoo of all the animals and I think some other footage uh, in and around Portland and other places. So I'll probably do a, a vacation recap in general talking about that stuff. So yeah, you're getting a whole slew of videos from mm -hmm. me with, uh, with this. So yeah, I guess that is it for the Portland Hall video. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if so, hit that like button and share it with your friends. And be sure and bring, uh, give me your thoughts, questions, and uh, constructive criticisms and suggestions Yes, I'm doing this ad-libbed because I forgot to bring my script. Uh, anyway, so yes, um, if you have any of those uh, suggestions or otherwise, please drop them in the comment section. Also, check yes. out the links down below uh, of all of my favorite YouTubers that are all worth checking out. So embarrassed. <laughs> uh, that tells you how mentally dedicated I am to my YouTube videos. Or maybe it's just my age. Anyway, uh, so and yes, uh, check out my Instagram and Twitter feeds uh, as much as I post on there and, and nowadays. And so, yes, otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. And remember, life's too short to be a music snob. <laughs>